And if you have always wondered about life, the answer is here. Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl In the book, Holocaust survivor Viktor Frankl reflects his resilience and insights gained from his experience as an oppressed prisoner in the Nazi camps. Viktor Frankl's wife died in a concentration camp. His father starved to death in another camp while his mother and brother were killed in Auschwitz. Despite his grief, he kept his will to live. And it is from Victor that we learn this. No matter what tragedy that seems to fall upon any of us, there is only one way to move on and forward. Look at life differently. Victor Frankl understood the feeling of being helpless and of life feeling as if meaningless. Sometimes we wonder, what is the purpose of life? Yet, we need to remember this. We are alive. This is the inspiration behind Logotherapy, the motivational force for man to find meaning in life. Logotherapy is a school of thought that contends that humans are motivated by the search for meaning, not power or pleasure. There are three elements in Logotherapy. The first is about our attitude. How we view life and can we accept what can be changed and being positive about what cannot be changed. Secondly, we need to unleash our creativity. Be agile. Be creative. What do we give to life? How can we make a difference in this world? The third determinant is about life experience. What can we learn from life's intricate twists of ups and downs? How can we experience the joy of living? The three factors come together through different events that shape our life experiences. We have the freedom to choose how we respond to them. And that depends on our creativity. Ultimately, these shapes the outcomes of our lives. Remember, dear friend, we might not be able to control events. However, we have the inner power to change how we react to them. Our response affects the outcome of everything in life. Let's say no to, I cannot. Instead, we say, yes, I can. As Frankl says, no matter what happens in life, we dictate how we react. With the right attitude and mindset, one can truly find meaning even in times of suffering. You have a choice. Everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the I asked of human freedom is the ability to choose one's attitude in any circumstances. Our freedom to decide on our reaction to circumstances. If there is one takeaway from Viktor Frankl's work, it is this. You have the choice on how you choose to respond to anything that happens to you in life. Your life is not determined by what happens to you. It is determined by how you respond to those things. Victor teaches this principle by telling the story of how he survived and endured unimaginable tragedies during the Holocaust. He survived and came out on the other end with an impressive mental fortitude and ability to find meaning in his experiences. This principle has guided me through adversity in my own life. Even in the wake of deep suffering that eats into the soul. Emotion, which is suffering, ceases to be suffering as soon as we form a clear and precise picture of it. In some ways, suffering ceases to be suffering the moment it finds a meaning, such as the meaning of a sacrifice. Meaning can transform suffering. In attributing meaning to your suffering, you loosen its grip on your mind and body. You start to see that while the suffering is unpleasant, it has a purpose that makes this unpleasantness worth bearing. Take the responsibility for your own life. It's yours, 100% yours. Life ultimately means taking the responsibility to find the right answer to its problems. Fulfill the tasks and challenges that life constantly sets for each individual. It makes us more resilient, you know? If you have a problem in your life, make it your duty to find the answer to that problem or a suitable path forward. Some people are deluded by existential frustration. Existential frustration is in itself neither pathological nor pathogenic. It is, well, just life in all its idiosyncrasies. A man's concern, even his despair, over the worthwhileness of life as an entity in existential distress. But by no means does he suffer from any mental disease. It may well be that interpreting the first diagnosis in terms of the latter that motivates a doctor to bury his patient's existential despair under a heap of tranquilizing drugs. 
It is the doctor's task, rather, to pilot the patient through his or her existential crises of growth and development. For many people, including myself, it is difficult to find meaning in this world. The difficulty in finding meaning creates existential distress. Doctor's solution to this existential problem is too often to pump people with drugs that numb the mind or have serious side effects. Drugs will not cure existential concerns, but a meaningful path of growth might. Tension in mental health? Mental health is actually derived from a certain degree of tension. The tension between what one has already achieved and what one should accomplish. It can also be the gap between what one is and what one should become. The tension between who you are today and who you want to become can create stability in your life. The gap is something that motivates you to do things that will help close the gap. And the pursuit of dosing the gap brings meaning to life. Paradoxical Intention In other words, the hyper-intention to fall asleep, arising from the anticipatory anxiety of not being able to do so, must be replaced by the paradoxical intention not to fall asleep. This will soon be followed by sleep. If you have trouble sleeping, it is likely that it will be worsened by your anxiety about your inability to sleep. In trying too hard to sleep, you will make it more difficult to sleep. But if instead, you decide that you will not sleep, you will find that leaning into your sleep problem actually helps you to sleep with greater ease. This is paradoxical intention at work. Ultimately, man should not ask what the meaning of his life is, but rather must recognize that it is he who is asked. In a way, each of us is questioned by life, and we can only answer to life by answering for our own lives. It is to life, that we can, and should respond with full accountability. To apply Viktor Frankl's logotherapy theory, let's refer back to the triangle of attitude, creativity and experience. The first is to create something or by doing a deed. The second is experience, a significant experience or meeting someone significant. In other words, meaning can be found not only in work but also in love. Most important, however, is the third avenue to having meaning in life. The helpless victim over a hopeless situation, facing a fate he cannot change. He may rise above himself, may grow beyond himself and by so doing change himself. You need to find meaning in your life. First is to find it through your work. You can also experience it through love. Lastly, you can also achieve fulfillment through personal growth. Those who have a, why, to live, can bear with almost any, how. Life is never made unbearable by circumstances, but only by lack of meaning and purpose. Love goes very far beyond the physical person of the beloved. It finds its deepest meaning in his spiritual being, his inner self. No man should judge unless he asks himself in absolute honest whether in a similar situation he might not have done the same. Reading Frankel's words, you understand that he was a deeply compassionate person. He was able to express sympathy for not only his fellow prisoners of war, but also his captors. If you want to remember something from this book summary, perhaps I might suggest this. In the words of Viktor Frankl, our greatest freedom in life is the freedom to choose our attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude in life. And there it is. Thank you for listening to this book summary of Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. We will be grateful if you can like this video and subscribe to this channel. Have an amazing day and see you soon.